Well, welcome to Torero Stadium, ladies and gentlemen, for tonight's final of these four CIF championship matches. This is the girls' Division Three title game between the University of San Diego High School and Coronado. These two Western League opponents know each other well. They've already played twice this year, once to a 0-0 tie, the other time Uni with a 2-0 victory over the Islanders. So as we get started, let me get you the starting lineups. For Coronado, it's Jamie Clages in goal with Maureen Mulvey, Sasha Vito, Rhett Chase, and Alex Vito in the back. And a little bit of confusion in that back four right now, but Chase is able to clear it out. In the midfield for Coronado, it's Ashley Kopp. Kelly Walsh, oh, a shot on goal by number three, Rachel, excuse me. Shot was by number seven, Natalie Vinti. But it's Rachel Poe, Ashley Walsh rounding up the midfield for Coronado. Then it's Kendall Caldwell and Dana Quiser up front for the Islanders. Let's get you the starting lineup for the University of San Diego High School. It's Jenny Jarvie right there with the ball. And as she goes down, she, I think she wanted a foul, but she's not going to get one. She plays with Jackie Ragudos up top. In the midfield, it's Jasmine Namdar, Shayla Williams, Natalie Vinti, and Jessica Gaskin. And there's Jasmine Namdar popping up on the left. Cuts back on her right foot. Couldn't get the shot off. And a shot again from outside. Jenny Jarvie this time testing the goalkeeper, Clages. In the back for University of San Diego, it's Katie Hoban, Megan Fogarty in the center, Kelly Detterman, and Lauren Bogart on the outside. And in goal, Jill Medigovic. Well, this is the University of San Diego High School's 14th consecutive year in the CIF Finals. Coach Dawn Lee and her assistant coach Dave Bush in their sixth year each doing a great job to keep the Lady Dons on top of not only the Western League but of Division Three. Like so many teams before, this team is extremely talented. The Islanders are coached by Miles Ramirez and Rich Keys. The Islanders are in their third CIF championship final in four years. In 2001, they won the Division IV title when they were grouped with the smaller schools. And now they're back in Division Three. They're one of those schools that seems to be on the bubble and has moved back and forth from time to time when there's new schools or enrollment adjustments. Of course, in the Division Four title, uh, title game tonight is another Western League opponent. Christian High School will be playing for the Division Four final. And earlier tonight, Scripps Ranch High School lost a 1-0 decision in the girls' Division Two final. So the Western League producing tons of players. Here's a chance. Ragudos in the middle. Oh, and Clay just somehow stops it. Oh, my. Jasmine Namdar down the left side. And she set Ragudos up point blank. And somehow, Jamie Clay just went down and pushed it off the post and scrambled to get it. What a great job. Clay just with 17 shutouts this year. This Coronado team, they won the Spartan tournament down in Chula Vista. They finished as runners-up in the Barons tournament. They're a very experienced team, and of course, playing in the Western League, arguably the toughest and deepest girls' soccer league in San Diego County, prepares them better than anything else for what they're going to see in the CIF championships. Here's a free kick. Thank you. 
And the goalkeeper, Clay, just way out to take this. Sending the ball in on the right. That's number six, Alex Vito. Sneaking up from a right back position. Detterman plays it away. Detterman and Williams on this side of the field for University of San Diego High School. Back into the middle for Walsh, Kelly Walsh that is. Two sets of sisters on this team. Walsh and Vito. Each with a sister. Kelly Walsh and Ashley Walsh both start in the midfield for Coronado. Jarvi plays it all the way back to the sweeper. Katie Hoban. Hoban. Knocked off the ball. And Sasha Vito plays it forward. Looking for Kweiser. Kweiser, the leading goal scorer on the year for the Islanders. Heading, I believe, to the University of California, Berkeley to play Division I college soccer next year. Quite a thrill for that young lady to step up and play against top-notch Pac-10 competition. Vinti gets it to Fogarty. Hoban right up the middle. Looking for Jasmine Namdar. A little bit too far. And a substitution already for Coronado. We're about six and a half minutes in, and who's it going to be? Annie Corhonan. The Finnish player going to come on for number three, Rachel Poe. Well, after all that, we finally got the substitutes in, and Corhonan arrives. This is practically a home game for the University of San Diego High School. Of course, their campus located across the street. And they play some of their home games actually on the backfield here at USD. It's a beautiful night. The final game tonight in our quadruple header of CIF Soccer Finals. This is the Girls Division Three Final. No score early on. University of San Diego High School in Coronado. Coronado in the Islander green, all green jerseys, and Uni in the all whites tonight. Ashley Kopp, number two, going to take this free kick, I believe. Kweiser comes back to take a look at it as well, but... That little run over didn't fool many people. Vito puts it in, and it's cleared out for a throw-in. Ashley Walsh with it. She finds Kendall Caldwell. Her cross is cut out, though, and Uni clears. And finally cleared away by Megan Fogarty. Cleared out by Coronado, and Jackie Ragudos went down hard behind the plate. I don't know if the referee's seen it, but 
Cop plays a ball in. Medigovic picks it up easily. Punts it out to midfield. Ball's carrying pretty well tonight, even though it's a little cool and damp. And a good crowd on the far side. I'm sure there's a lot of fans left over from the boys' Division Three final, which was won by University City High School, 3-2 to two over Point Loma. Back to Detterman. Detterman plays Hoban. Hoban just spreading it around now. Fogarty asks for in the middle. She gets it. She has Bogart out there on the outside. Oh, a little bit of hesitation, and oh, Detterman got away with it, though. Here's a shot from outside. It took a deflection. Oh, goalkeeper wanted it but couldn't get to it. Jessica Gaskin really lined that one up from about 25 yards and let it fly. Detterman now for Ragudos in the corner. Jackie Ragudos holds it, turns. Now she's running at players. Here's Gaskin all alone. Boy, they forgot her. Curled in but headed out. Shayla Williams now. Williams is cross. Ragudos somehow gets on the end of it. And there's Cop, but her clearance is blocked. Walsh tries to clear it, also blocked. And finally up the midfield. Well, ragged play from these teams, and you'd expect it. They know each other well. They've already played twice in the league. You know this is going to be a hard-fought game. And Coach Don Lee's going to make a substitution right now. Jasmine Namdar's coming off, and she's limping as she jogs toward us. And I don't know what's wrong, but hopefully she'll be able to continue. Number six, Sarah Gombar, replaces her. Detterman down the line. Finds Jarvie. Oh, nice cutback. She tries to keep it. Oh, nice two step overs. And finally leaves it for Williams. But Williams cross doesn't really get to its intended target. Now here's Detterman running across the field. Back to the go sweeper and Hoban. Just clears it up the midfield. Cop tries to turn and dribble and stop dead in her tracks by Gaskin. Nice save. Walsh for Cop. Cop. And that's Kendall Caldwell, number 15, getting no, excuse me, that's Quizer, 14. Walsh can't control it, and Williams will just let it out of bounds. Smart play. Fogarty. Back to Hoban. Detterman's now switched to the other side of the field. Plays it up front for Ragudos. Uni really opening up the field now. Ragudos with a good turn and a burst of speed. She's by one defender. She's by two. Tries to chip it in the box, and offsides, yes. Gaskin was in behind the defense too quick. Clanges. Williams back to get it for Uni. Ragudos can't control. And they find Quizer. Quizer having to come back very deep to receive the ball, and 
That's going to put a dent in her chances to score goals tonight. Vito has it tackled away, but they'll keep possession. And a couple of more substitutions now. Number three, Rachel Poe is going to come back in and replace number nine, Kelly Walsh. Number 10, Marissa Nagler is going to make her first appearance. And she replaces number five, Annie Kornonen. I mentioned Kweiser, the leading goal scorer on this team. Uni's leading scorers, Jackie Ragudos and Jasmine Namdar. Ragudos with eight goals and seven assists. Namdar with actually nine goals and three assists. We are looking for a coach from the Memphis soccer team. And the throw-in's going to go the other way. Uni thought it was their ball. This is more like a chess match than a soccer game. It's pretty slow. Both teams trying to make adjustments and changes. There's a chance. Headed in, and Hoban lets it go. She knew it wasn't on goal. Nagler doing a nice job to get it towards goal. Cop shielding. Plays it back for Chase. Fogarty. Gombar's just possessed, but hustles back and wins it again. I think a lot of the fans from the boys game have stayed and are raising quite a ruckus on the far touch line. And there's a foul. Yes. Kweiser hit from behind as she tried to flick that ball on. And a free kick for the Islanders. Clage is going to come all the way up from the goalkeeper position. She crosses midfield to take this. And Ragudos gets 10 yards in front of the ball and Challenges the free kick. Clagius drives it in at the edge of the box and really doesn't quite reach the box. Now Ragudo says the goalkeeper out. Let's see if uh, University of San Diego High School can get at him. Vinti loses possession. And the Islanders knock it up the other way. Ooh, a hard tackle there. Referee says play on. Hoban goes back to collect it. Hoban very calm and collected back there. She just surveys the field, takes her time. There's a hard foul on Ragudos. Both coaches know who the other team's top players are, and they're going to be marked tightly and probably knocked to the turf often. This game really hasn't sparked the life yet, but we know it will soon. These two teams know each other well. University of San Diego High School looking for yet another title to put in the trophy case. Nice combination play there. A little bit long, though, and Detterman just plays it into touch. Ashley Walsh looking for a place to play. Vito taking too much time. Caldwell might have been a better choice for that last throw in. Good hard tackle. Alex Vito really getting stuck in there. Vinti. Tried to lead Detterman on the backside and couldn't. Now Detterman, if she'll go forward as a a lot of space to exploit. There she goes. And she pushes Vito from behind. That's Sasha Vito. Sasha's sister, Alex, of course, plays on the other side. Clagius.
Kopp heads it on for Quizer. Quizer battling with Fogarty. Quizer pokes it away. A lot of tussling, arm pulling, and it's Coronado ball. Caldwell trying to get forward. Walsh also giving chase. And Hoban just plays it off of Walsh for a, cor a goal kick. Caldwell. Vinti back and intercepts. Boy, she covers a lot of ground in the middle of the field. Jarvi can't hold it. And the sweeper, Mulvey, just knocks it forward. Ragudos giving chase. Rhett Chase defending. Williams plays it down. It's going to go out of bounds. Neither team able to put much together. The other team checking their every move. And another substitution. Number 11, Aaron Buss is going to come in. And who's she going to replace? Aaron Buss just walked onto the field, and Coronado, I believe, has 12 players on the field. Now, I can't count. There are only 11 players on the field for Coronado, so no problem there. Still didn't see who walked off the field there, and uh, but Aaron Buss getting her first touch. Jarvie tries to flick it on, can't. Cop controls. Williams sticks a foot out. Buss has Caldwell way down in the corner and tries to squeeze it into her. The ball squirts out. Nagler couldn't control it, though. Sasha Vito for Quizer. Caldwell. Some good buildup here by Coronado. Caldwell still with it. Caldwell celebrating her 16th birthday today. Vinti, oh, with a nice cut back and then put on the ground, a hard tackle by Nagler. Ragudos cannot hold, though, and Mulvey, oh, has her pocket picked. Ragudos still on her feet, and the referee's going to blow the whistle, yeah. Ragudos lost the advantage when she stumbled and couldn't run the goal any longer. So now Hoban's going to come up and take the free kick. Jarvie running all the way across the field. Hoban's ball in. And Mulvey just clears it out. Now Caldwell trying to get the counterattack started before the Hoban can get back into position. And Fogarty just doing a great job of holding solid. Actually, that's Bogard. My mistake. I apologize. Lauren Bogart doing a good job. Williams can't get ahead to it. Alex Vito kicks it out of bounds. And the Lady Don's pushing forward. Wouldn't a Lady Don be a contradiction in terms? Clagius confidently off her line, takes that chest high. Nice punt up to midfield, taken there by Nagler. And knock forward for Quizer. Quizer chasing Hoban down. Oh, a nice shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder tackle, and 
There's the cross. Caldwell's there. Flicked on to the far post. Oh, my. Medigovic was beaten as the flick on sailed past her. And that's exactly what Miles Ramirez wanted to see out of his Islanders tonight. Chase puts the ball down in the corner and University of San Diego High School is going to have to get out of their own end now. Katie Hoban sent to the turf with a hard shoulder to shoulder tackle. Big bounce on this wet turf. Ragudos, can she hold it? Jarvi. She can't collect it. Chase clears it out with her left foot. Caldwell holds it. Bus. Cop. She had Nagel on the other side and couldn't seem to find her. Jarvi. Hoban. Oh, a little careless there. A little too. Nonchalant as she ran right into Caldwell. Detterman. Hoban. Quiser putting under pressure again. Goalkeeper should get to this. As the ball skips on the wet turf. Clay just now finally picks it up and Anna, we've got another substitution. Looks like Jasmine Namdar is going to try to give it a go one more time. Nagler also comes off for Coronado. He's replaced by number nine, Kelly Walsh, who started. And number 19, Skippy Alley on for the first time. Flicked on by Namdar. Ragudos has it poked away from her. Walsh finds Quiser. Oh, and Coronado was off and running, and the referee's whistle will bring it back. Ashley Kopp to take this. Quiser isolated. Bogart picks her pocket. Nice job. Jarvi holds it up. Hoban. Oh, and she gives a really soft pass out here to the outside. Vinti. Bogart. Number six, Gombar, is now in the back for Detterman for the University of San Diego High School. Now a little bit of good soccer. Gaskin finds Gombar. Jarvi turns. Ragudos. They really spread the field out. Good tackle. Gombar, Gaskin, just tries to dump it in the corner. Ten minutes remaining here in this girls' division three soccer final between the University of San Diego High School and Coronado. No score. Walsh. Namdar plays it back to Hoban. Vinti holds it up. Namdar with a quick move to the inside. 
Gaskin tries to release Vinti down the left side. Can't do it. Mulvey. Big ball over the top. And everybody in the stands, myself included, thought that Bogard was up on Quiser's back there, but referee says play on. Natalie Venti now sending Namdar in on the left side. Oh, and Namdar goes down hard. And I hope she's okay. She bounced up. Walsh coming in for bus here on this left midfield slot. Jarvi again looking for Jasmine Namdar streaking down the left. They can't seem to find her. Ragudos shows for the ball and gets it. Chipped over. Gaskin in. Oh, and a huge collision. Klages and Gaskin, like two freight trains colliding in the night, just ran right into each other in the box. And fortunately, they're both up and okay. Somebody could have really been hurt there. Clay just, just couldn't hold the ball. And Gaskin kept running. Clay urging her teammates to push forward. Namdar gets ahead to that punt. Vito. Plays Alley in. Hoban steps by her. Vinti with Namdar ahead of her. This one's to Ragudos, and oh, just out of a reach and a penalty. Oh my. And actually, no, not a penalty. He's going to call that outside the box. There must have been some sort of shirt tug or a pull behind the play, because it's certainly when the ball arrived in Jackie Ragudos's path, they were in the penalty area. Wow. So a great chance for the University of San Diego High School. With about seven minutes remaining in the half. And Katie Hoban wants 10 yards, and she's going to get it, and referee's going to move that wall back. A lot of bodies in front of Jamie Clegis. And Hoban tees it up and blasts it into the corner. Katie Hoban gives the University of San Diego High School a one to nothing lead. There were so many bodies, white jerseys and green, in front of Jamie Clegis. I don't think she really had a good sight of that ball. Scored by number two, Hoban. Caldwell's back in up front now with Quiser. Walsh comes and gets it. Cop takes it. And it's Walsh to Walsh there in the midfield. Number 15, Kendall Caldwell in the contest for Coronado. A nice ball with the outside of the foot from Jackie Ragudos, and she finds Jasmine Namdar all alone. And Namdar goes down on the ground and no call again. Well, I'll tell you what, the referee's been consistent. He has let these teams play. The physical confrontations, the hard shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder stuff. He's not blowing a whistle every time somebody makes contact. And he's not put up with any shirt pulling or any late stuff after the ball's gone, which is nice to see. Well, there's a really good turn from Sasha Vito.
Walsh looks for Caldwell, can't find her. Ragudos back to Vinti. All the way back to Hoban, right up the middle to Fogarty. Fogarty puts it in the corner for Williams. And Jarvie sends Williams on her way again as well. Oh, and off her arm. I think Shayla Williams thought it was incidental, but the referee didn't, and his is the only opinion that counts tonight. Not mine, not anybody else's. Clages finds nobody but Fogarty. Kelly Walsh plays it into the corner. Hoban clears it. Jarvie, can she hold it? No. Now it's Ashley Walsh crossing into the middle, really to nobody. Vinti back to Hoban. Oh, and they give it away. Sasha Vito, they got cop on the far side if they can pick her out. And there she is, racing in just a little bit too long. Walsh's cross, knocked down by Fogarty and cleared out. Good hard tackle. Vinti's dispossessed, but again it's cleared. Chase gets ahead on it, but Raguto sends up on the end of it. Gaskin looking for Jarvie. Mulvey lets it roll, but it's not going to get out of bounds. So Chase has to come back and help her. Walsh to Caldwell, and it'll go out of bounds. Gaskin with a great turn. Showed the ball one way and flipped it around the other. That's over everybody's head, and Raguto could be on the end of this. Namdar with a first-time shot. And Namdar's cleat caught Alex Vito in the head after she took the shot. It was completely accidental. Excuse me, that's not Alex. Who is that? That's Rachel Poe, number three. Now Detterman's going to come in and replace... Fogarty. Clay just takes the long goal kick to find Quizer. Quizer chases down her errant touch and leaves Vinti with a nice little cutback, but gives it away. Now Gaskin. Vinti. And it'll be Coronado ball. A lot of fans on their feet on the far side. And right on top of the game here. It's a wonderful environment to see a game in. And Hoban called for the foul. And she's hurt. And we're going to take a break and uh, hope that she's okay. So Katie Hoban's up. Okay, she's up. Shaking up, though, on the play and still walking a little woozy back there. Clay just up to take this free kick. Hoban holds her line at the edge of the 18 yard box. Vinti. Oh, and here's a chance. Oh, my. They had the goalkeeper out and panicked just a little bit. There's always that temptation when the goalkeeper's out there to try to hurry and get off a quick shot as the goalkeeper's retreating. When so often, what you really need to do is just settle it down, collect the ball, and if the op shot opportunity is there, take it. If it's not, build up for your goal. Sasha Vito, her cross left 
by Ashley Walsh. Caldwell's cross blocked. Jarvie plays it back. Hoban's going to take this. Gaskin laid it off, and Detterman played it up the line for Ragudos, but it was just too far. Now it's Ashley Kopp in the middle of the field. She's played a nice game so far tonight. Seems to be in the middle of most of Coronado's best opportunities. Ragudos isn't going to get to this, though. Only a couple of minutes here remaining in the first half. The University of San Diego High School leads one to nothing going into halftime. Well, that was nice timing by the referee there. So one nothing on a Katie Hoban goal, and as she limps off the field, coaches are going to go see if she's all right. We'll give you an update when we start the second half. Again, the score, University of San Diego High School, one, Coronado, zero. We'll be back with second half action. And we're back here for the second half of this girls division three CIF San Diego section soccer final between the University of San Diego High School and the Coronado Islanders. University of San Diego High School leads one to nothing on a Katie Hoban free kick goal. We thought we might get through the first half without a, a goal scored, but. Pace was a little slow in that first half and You'd almost expect that from two teams that have played each other so many times. I mean, not just this year, but every year. Clages gobbles it up. She'll get it back up the other end of the field, but not a lot of green jerseys in the other end of the field. Fogarty knocks it down. Vinti can't control. Jarvie to Williams. Back to Jarvie in a nice turn with the outside of the foot. Woo. And a foul from behind, yep. Yeah. Jarvi put that ball just a little bit too far out in front of her. Clay just is getting a workout tonight. Flicked on. Caldwell can't get to it. Hoban just knocks it away. I saw the trainer talking to Katie Hoban at halftime, and Hoban walked that back out on the field much more confidently than she had walked off. So let's hope that uh, the young lady's okay. And now Detterman's going to go down and take the throw in. Uni putting the pressure on. Venti with it. Oh, here's a chance. Oh, nearly an, nearly an own goal. My goodness. Rachel Poe, midfielder on the back side here, just knocked the ball straight out of bounds and gave up the corner kick. Not a bad idea, but that was dangerously close to be going into the upper corner of her own goal. Ragudos. Oh, in the short corner, and she runs by the first player. Vinti tries to hit it first time. Vinti again, and it's deflected, and we'll have another corner kick. So Coronado just weathering the storm here. A couple of good chances by the University of San Diego High School. Now, they showed him the cor short corner last time. I'm sure they won't do it again. You can see Shayla Williams down there stretching in the cold. Here's Williams driving it down low. 
Given back door by Jarvi, and oh! Clay just with the save. Hoban caught forward, and Detterman's trying to clear. Now Williams comes all the way back to Hoban, who's retreated to her sweeper position. Up to Ragudos, over to Vinti. Natalie Vinti can't control, though. Vinti, little head fake. Nice move. Jarvie holds it up just long enough to... Williams on the end of it. Ragudos to the far post, and it's tipped wide. Nope. Wasn't touched. Boy, I thought Clay just might have got a hand to that. Boy, Ragudos from the edge of the box let it fly to the far post, and... Look pretty good. Clay just miss hit that ball. Ashley Walsh playing it forward for Caldwell. Poe, can she get on the end of this? Yes, she does. Nice cut to the inside. Good move, but there's Namdar. Chase, back to Mulvey. Jasmine Namdar holding, shielding. Fogarty to Hoban, to Vinti. To Fogarty, out wide to Williams, and it scuffed off the side of her foot, and Williams with a great turn. Well, she made the most of that. It wasn't a good ball, but she's got great speed, and she runs away from Walsh. Crossed in, and Clay just scoops it up. Gaskin wanted that ball at the penalty spot, or at least at the far post. Now Kelly Walsh. And that ball's going to go all the way to the goalkeeper. Fogarty. One of a long line of Fogarty's to play here at the University of San Diego High School. Uni looking for its 12th CIF section title. 12 titles. It is just domination at this division. And Dawn Lee, the head coach, has got herself a powerful, powerful program. Of course, Dawn took over this program from her late father, Butch Lee, who was a fabulous coach and someone that I call called a friend. Good guy and good for San Diego soccer. Walsh can't play it forward, and Jarvey gets on the end of it. Here's Bogart. Bogart racing forward. Lots of room. Plays Namdar. Jarvie again. Bogart has Namdar in the corner. Namdar with a nice cutback. Crossed in. Headed on goal. And just wide by Gaskin. Boy, Gaskin got herself in a really good position inside the six-yard box. And really, nobody was there to challenge her. Ashley Kopp chasing, Gaskin right behind her. Quiser can't keep it, but neither can Bogart. That's out of bounds. Poe, she'll get it back, but it's out of bounds first. Bogart looking long down the touchline. Jarvie giving chase. And that back pass intercepted. 
Quages comes out and gets it. But Ragudos gave good chase. Hamtar misjudged that ball. We've seen a lot of that today. Um, you know, when you play in a bigger stadium like this, it's not like playing on your small little high school field that you know, you, the, these kids are used to. And with the bleachers and everything else, oh my, hard tackle by Mulvey. And Ragudos is down and she's not moving. And let's hope she's okay. There was no foul on the play. Mulvey just stuck her foot behind the ball and Ragudos went flying over the top of it. And we're going to take a short break here and the uh, trainer's probably going to have to come out and take a look at her. So Clay just puts it back into play quickly as she knocks it down for Caldwell. Oh, and another collision, and what do we got? We have obstruction? Yeah. Nope, a penalty. He's giving a penalty, and is the foul on the goalkeeper? I don't know. But Kweiser chased the ball in. Hoban stood there thinking that Medovic could, could get to it. Kweiser stuck her foot in first and got to the ball. And it's actually on Hoban. It's on Hoban. She's been cautioned. She's going to have to leave the field. And I don't think that's a good call. I think the player that should have been cautioned was the goalkeeper, if anybody. That's who the foul was on. Hoban really stayed out of it. If the foul's on Hoban, it's obstruction. But Kweiser clearly got to the ball first, and then the goalkeeper got a piece of her. And I think that was the foul that has given us our penalty. So Ashley Kopp with a chance to tie this thing up. Kopp versus Medigovic. Kopp drives it low in the corner and ties this game up. And the Coronado girls are celebrating. And well, they should. They really earned that one. Well, the play all started with Klages, the goalkeeper. It was her long free kick that went all the way down into the penalty area. I know how Oban's going to come back on. Gombar comes off. Nothing she could do. Never got a chance to even play the ball. And if Oban's disappointed in the official, I don't blame her. But I think it was the right call. Now Ragudos. Finds Gaskin. Bogart, the Fogarty. Let's see if this opens up this game a little bit. Bogart here on the near side with lots of space. Charvey can't keep it, though. Caldwell steps around one tackle. She's got Quiser in front of her. Hoban, the hard tackle. And a foolish thing to do with a yellow card. I, I think she really went after the player there. And uh, she wanted to make sure she was not on the receiving end of that collision. She was going to be on the giving end. On the, uh, yeah, the giving end. And that's for a player who got hurt earlier. I think that's a silly thing to be thinking. Well, this game has really sprung to life. In the first half, it was a little slow. And it's not, it's, there's nothing dull or boring now. With 30 minutes to play, we're all tied at one. Coronado won, Uni won for all the marbles. Remember, if this game is tied, at the end of regulation, we will go to overtime. If it is tied in overtime, at the end of overtime, they will be declared co-champions. Ragudos flicks it on for Jarvi. Chase back to Mulvey. Mulvey nicely rolls it out to Chase. But only as far as Fogarty. Fogarty still with it. Nice move. And a University of San Diego High School throw. 
Detterman coming up. Now you needs to push forward and find a, win a game winner. They've never stopped attacking, but there wasn't the urgency that there seems to be now. Vinti comes back and wins it. There's a long cross. Oh, my, and a huge collision. And Jasmine Namdar is down, and he's probably hurt. Clay just really ran into her heart. And Clay just is going to go see if she's okay. I don't think she meant to hit her, but the ball was up in the air. Neither player really had a chance to get to the ball. Namdar wasn't going to get her head on it, and Clay just wasn't going to get a hand to it. Namdar takes it down. She's been the leading goal scorer for the Lady Dons this season with nine. Rachel Poe fouled from behind, and another free kick for Coronado, and Clay just is going to come up and try to do the magic one more time. Long ball. Looking for Caldwell, but Hoban gets to it. Vito. Caldwell. Back to Vito. Out wide to Poe. Oh, Poe tries to push herself by Namdar and can't. Now it's Quiser. Into the middle, but Vinti is there. Back to Hoban, and Hoban clears it out. Oh, and a clever back heel. Charvi trying to find Ragudos in a little bit of space, and Ashley Kopp gets spun around by Vinti. Natalie Vinti and Ashley Kopp really going out in the middle of the field. Whatever team can control the midfield is Going to create most of the chances and control this game. Charvi doing a nice job. Mulvey doing a her bit back there at Sweeper, clearing it out. Vito. Now she leaves it for Cop, but Hoban's going to get there first. Ragudos. Oh, and a nice turn. Boy, she showed her the back pass and instead spun and turned and a foul and probably a yellow card. Yep. <laughs> Alex Vito has shown the yellow card and is going to have to be substituted for. Teal Jensen, number 18 now in the game. First time we've called her name. Big tall player. Oh, and she coughed it up and off the post. Clay just nearly gave up a rebound goal that would have seen Coronado fall behind. Instead, Jarvie's shot goes off the post and bounces out. Vito comes back in. Teal not called on to do much. And Clay takes the goal kick. Well, it's 1-1 with about 25 minutes left to go. And remember, if it is tied, we will go to overtime. Vito for Kelly Walsh. Looking forward for Caldwell. Caldwell off her chest. Finds Cop in the corner. Oh, and Cop goes right out over the end line. Unable to control it. And yet another substitution. This is Aaron Buss. Buss is going to come on for who? 
Bus is going to come on for Ashley Walsh. Number 11, Aaron Bus returns to the contest for Coronado. Hoban to take this goal kick. University of San Diego High School, a bit uninspired lately. Need to pick it up. Coach Don Lee throughout this game has been urging them to knock it around, keep the ball moving. And it's when they don't do that that they get themselves into trouble. Miles Ramirez, of course, the Coronado coach, wants his girls to put University of San Diego High School players under pressure and force the game tempo. Namdar crosses it to Vinti, who can't get a touch. Shayla Williams wins it back. Forward for Jarvie. Jarvie switches fields, and it's Bogart. She's got lots and lots of space, and nobody challenging her. Ragudos checks in and gets it. A little give and go with Bogart. She can't keep it, though. And it's two on two the other way if Caldwell can turn, but she didn't see it. And Gaskin comes over with a nice hard sliding tackle. Gaskin may have hurt herself a little bit on that. And University of San Diego High School, the number one team in the county for a large stretch of the season. It was only a couple of losses in the Western League that knocked them from that top spot in the county, and that's for all divisions. Now here's a chance. Quiser has her shot deflected out for a corner, and Coronado with yet another opportunity. Mulvey's going to push up from the sweeper position, and at 1-1, Coronado's going for the win. Teal Jensen's going to come back in. She'll replace Poe. Rachel Poe doing a nice job here on this near side, but trying to get some height in there. Caused some problems from the Uni defense. Here's the ball driven in near post. Namdar clears it out. Who's going to get there? Jarvi? Oh, she's upended by a tough tackle. Oh, here's a chance all alone. The substitute, Teal Jensen, and she knocked it in the lower corner. And Jill Medigovic went down and got it. Well, Medigovic really being tested here in the second half. First half, hardly tested at all. Hoban heads it straight up in the air. Quiser shielding. Hoban throwing her body in to the tackle. Mulvey, she's got a player wide. It's Chase. Jensen didn't come back for it, couldn't get it. Fortunately, defender knocked it out, and we've got another substitution. Well, Jensen just in for a minute and a half there, but boy, caused all kinds of problems, including a shot on goal that nearly found the far corner. Rhett Chase. Ashley Comp now with it. Bogart doing a nice job at the left back spot. Finds Jarvie. Jasmine Namdar, she clears it right into the middle of the field. And Natalie Vinti, can she get on the end of it? Yes, she does. Now Shayla Williams racing for it. Williams around the corner? No. A little bit too long and a goal kick. Boy, Alex Vito raced across to meet Shayla Williams in a foot race. And Williams' touch was just a bit heavy and carried it out over the end line. We're inside of 20 minutes remaining. We're all tied at one. The University of San Diego High School in Coronado for the Girls Division Three crown. Clagis. 
The goalkeeper for Coronado steps up and Bogart clears it out. Nicely done. And a substitution to be made. Gombar is going to come in. No, nope, she's not. It's Coronado's ball, and they can't substitute. Gaskin plays it back to Hoban. Hoban straight up in the air. Jarvie knocked it back, but Coronado took it from there. And Rachel Poe back to her sweeper. Now Hoban driving it forward for Ragudos. Ashley Kopp and Gaskin. Namdar comes out with it, and she wants to take it in the left. Now she's going to run right down the middle. A good hard shot, and Clay just gets her body behind it, and you see the ball skip on the wet turf. It's 9.30 at night here at Torero Stadium, and the field is definitely wet. We're very close to Mission Bay, and the damp air is settled on the field here. Jarvie can't hold it because Chase is all over her. Natalie Vinti brings it down. Vinti plays it square for Detterman. Detterman racing from a right back spot out to Williams. Williams up the line. Oh, Ragudos tries to turn and referee says play on. Cop brings it down. She's got two players forward. Caldwell and Bogart are going to be in a foot race. Medigovic comes off her line and gets it easy. Natalie Vinti now in the midfield. Lots of space. Nobody closes her down at first. She's still got room to run. Oh, and she's taken down just outside the area. A free kick, and we're going to have a yellow card as well. Number six, Alex Vito with her second yellow card, and that's a red card. And that changes the complexion of this game entirely. Well, there was nothing malicious about the foul, but it was foolish. Alex Vito just stuck her leg out as Natalie Vinti went running by. Vinti went tumbling to the turf. And not only do we have a dangerous free kick opportunity, but Coronado now reduced to 10 players. And Vito just inconsolable on the sideline. And Coach Miles Ramirez trying to let her know that, hey, it's all right. Now Hobam with another free kick opportunity. She scored from this distance before. She's got a lot of goal to look at. Oh, and she missed the upper corner. Wow. Now Gombar's going to come on if they'll allow the substitution. Fogarty comes off. And the chess match just got a little more interesting. Bus is going to come off. Ashley Walsh will come back on. And Coronado is going to go in search of their Division Three title with only 10 players now. Clagius. A poorly taken goal kick. Vinti goes up and wins it. Ragudos tries to put Jarvie in. They're going to let this go to the goalkeeper. On this wet grass, the ball is going to go a little, roll a bit slower. Defenders need to realize that. In fact, it may die in the wet grass. Gombar still going hard. Gombar wins the throw. Jarvie right back to her. Bogard gets ahead to it. Gaskin is going to get there first. Hoban 
looking for Ragudo. So, and it just was behind her. Detterman looking for Jarvi, but Jarvi couldn't hold it. Cop tries to go forward, and the ball ricochets back to her goalkeeper. And Mulvey tries to clear it. Kept in by Poe. Nice job as she steps around a player. Walsh tries to put Kweiser in. Medovic comes off her line and gets it easily. Detterman gives chase. One, two. And for those of you uh, watching this at home, I need to correct myself. Coronado not playing with 10 players, but allowed to replace Vito because it was a what they call a soft red. If it had been a straight red card, Coronado would have been unable to replace her. But since it was a second yellow, it's considered a soft red. And also because it was not for any sort of violent foul. She didn't hit anybody, shove anybody. Big, strong tackle, and Jasmine Namdar has been on the receiving end of about three or four of those tonight, and she keeps bouncing up every time. If the last name sounds familiar, it should. Jasmine's dad, Cha-Cha Namdar, played for the San Diego Soccers back in their heyday. Winning a fistful of indoor titles with the San Diego Soccers. And it's only appropriate because earlier today, Scripps Ranch High School, led by Mike Wilrich, won a CIF title. Mike Wilrich, of course, the son of Gene Wilrich, one of Cha Cha Namdar's teammates with the Soccers. So, a bunch of second generation stars out here. Hoban, not even challenged, tries to find Ragudos, and probably not a good choice. Detterman into space. Ragudos, can she get there? No. Boy, she's quick on the turn. She's got short legs, but she really turns them over and is able to accelerate quickly. Now Williams for Gaskin. Jarvie. Steps over it. Loses her man. Namdar on her left foot. She shoots. Klages with the save. And oh, Namdar upset with herself because she knows she had either corner and she hit it right down the middle. Coronado's throw. And the Islanders refuse to go away. Quiser pressures Bogart into giving it away. And another substitution. Number 17, Megan Mishovic, making her first appearance. She replaces Caldwell. Caldwell's done a great job up front tonight with Kweiser. The two of them often being alone against the back four for University of San Diego. Medigovic off her line. Handles that ball easily. Namdar. Gaskin. Oh, that ball was for Williams and went right off the back of teammate Jarvie. Kweiser comes back for it in the middle of the field. 
Puts it forward. Now Ragudos the other way. Oh my, and Rhett Chase doing a nice job. Ashley Walsh trying to go forward. She and Williams are well matched over on that far side. Jarvie with Namdar in the middle. Oh, and Rachel Poe gets there first, and it'll be out for a corner. Hoban comes forward, and we're inside of 10 minutes remaining in this girls' division three CIF final. University of San Diego High School one, Coronado High School one. These Western League rivals meeting for the third time this year. Chance in the box and cleared out. Mishovic trying to keep Bogart from turning. Bogart does a great job. Into the middle with her left foot. Good cross. Gaskin back in the box. Mulvey gets it. And Mulvey thumps it forward for Quiser. And it's a foot race. Detterman and Quiser. Detterman makes no doubt about it and sends the ball into touch. Number four, Vanessa De La Garza coming in. She replaces Mishovic. De La Garza making her first appearance in tonight's game. And Coach Ramirez going to the bench now. Knowing that he needs to get some fresh legs in there if he's going to get a scoring chance. All the goal scoring opportunities that Coronado's created have been really by forcing the play with hustle and putting Uni under pressure. And to do that, you've got to be able to run up and down the field. Cop heads it straight up in the air, and Vinti comes down with it. Walsh steals it away and finds De La Garza. De La Garza and Bogart. Bogart. All the way up for Ragudos. Rhett Chase for Quiser. Quiser goes in hard with Detterman. The back pass to Hoban, and Hoban clears it. Chase goes up with pressure from Ragudos and still gets it. Walsh to Cop. Bogart sends it the other way. Poe. Cop. Charvy with a nice turn. Namdar with lots of space. Gonna use her speed. Try to take on Teal Jensen. Steps over it, comes back. Her cross into the box. And Mulvey is just waiting. Mulvey's played a marvelous game at sweeper tonight. You think about it, both defenses have been nearly flawless. Both goals coming on free kicks. Holbam with a free kick outside the box that gave Clay just no chance. And of course, Coronado's goal coming via the penalty kick. So. From the run of play, neither of these defenses giving up anything. Klajus with a booming kick across midfield. And late in the game, it's amazing she still has the leg strength. She has played a fabulous game. Gombar. She's got a lot of space. Namdar. Jarvie into the box. 
Oh, and just popped up into the air. Gaskin couldn't get a solid foot on it, and Clay just saved it. Namdar turns and faces her marker, plays it across, but gives it away. Cop to Poe. De La Garza coming back for it. Can't keep it. Jarvi. She handled the ball, yes. And a free kick for Coronado coming up. We're inside of five minutes now. Inside of five, still tied at one. And Clagis is going to come all the way up one more time. Ragudos, with a burst of speed, tries to get by Chase. Can't do it. Chase pokes it out of bounds in a good battle. Of course, everyone yelling at Jackie Ragudos to shoot the ball with Clay just out of the goal, but that's easier said than done, especially with Rhett Chase draped all over her. Now, a bunch of fresh players playing to come in for Coronado at the next opportunity. Oh, that ball crossed in the middle. Namdar's header goes wide of the post. And Coronado dodges a bullet. Jessica Gaskin will take this corner kick on the near side. Clay just making sure that Poe's okay. Six uni players in the box. Vinti at the near post. Clagius gets a hand to it. And another corner kick. Clagius just getting one of her hands out to that ball and knocking it away. The University of San Diego High School still banging on the front door. Pushing extra players now. Seven players in the box. Clay just again slaps it down. And Williams back to Gombar. Back to Williams. And Coronado clears the decks one more time. And it's the throw in the other direction. Jarvi. Boy, she's been a workhorse up front tonight, holding the ball. Detterman with De La Garza coming on hard. Hoban right up the middle to Gombar. Oh, Gombar gives it away in a very dangerous spot. 40 yards out from goal right in the middle of the field. Hoban picks up the loose ball, and here she comes. And gives it away herself. Mulvey trying to take advantage with Hoban up. Let's see if Coronado can go forward. Quiser slips on the wet turf. Williams looking for Ragudos. Jackie Ragudos flicks it up and over. And Red Chase still recovers. Nice play by Vito to find Walsh. Cop in the corner. Can she keep this in play? I think she'll get there. The question is, what can she do when she, once she gets there? She and Bogart jostling, and Bogart finally gives up the throw-in. Jensen comes off. Caldwell's back in. Poe comes off. Five. 
Vito into the box, but it's cleared. It's a handball, and the referee is going to make the call. Boy, I think the University of San Diego, yeah, they would have loved to have let play go on there. They certainly had an advantage. Long ball over the top. Can Vinti get on the end of the, excuse me, that's not Vinti. That's Namdar. She switched sides of the field and trips up her player. Clagius. She's going to leave it for Cop this time. Not going to take any chances. With just a few minutes left to go, the referee looks at his watch. Maybe only a minute left. Cop knocks this ball up to midfield. Walsh flicks it on. Hoban's going to get there. One more chance for the University of San Diego. Gaskin can't get a hold of it, or can she? Boy, tough battle. Coronado now, throwing bodies around, desperate to get forward themselves. Namdar just knocks it forward. Mulvey hasn't had a wrong step all day, and she heads it away. Bogart, Gaskin, Gombar can't keep it. Hmm. Just off. Referee looks down at his watch one more time, and I can't imagine that we're going to get any more play here. He'll throw this in, and the game will be over. And there it is, the end of regulation with the score, University of San Diego High School 1, Coronado 1. So we go to overtime, our first overtime match. If it's still tied at the end of two overtime periods, they will be declared co-champions. So here we are at the start of overtime. The University of San Diego High School and Coronado in the Girls Division III final. All tied up at one. This is our first 15-minute overtime period. University of San Diego High School, no stranger to overtime championship games. They actually played an overtime championship game last year in this same final against the University City High School. That game ended tied, and they were declared co-champions. This year, Coach Dawn Lee, I'm sure, is looking for an outright title. And, of course, Miles Ramirez wanting his Coronado Islanders to win one as well. Nice job by Walsh to get by Williams. Well, the pace is quick here to start the overtime period. Vigo. Sasha Vito doing a nice job. Whoop. Medigovic scooping it up. Putting it up into the center circle. Charvey coming all the way back to win it. Bogart. Oh, and Jasmine Namdar just fell down, slipped on the turf, but recovers nicely and wins the ball back for her team. Now Vinti with a good tackle, but Jarvie can't keep it on the far side. Both these teams are going to start showing some fatigue. I mean, it's been a long day. The grass is wet and it's tough to run. Mulvey just plays it out. In overtime, why not be safe? You don't want to take chances and you don't want to make silly mistakes.
Coronado looking for another title. They, they won a Division IV crown back in 2001. This would be their first Division III crown. Hoban switching the fields to Namdar. Hoban not afraid to play it to a player who is marked tightly. She's got a lot of confidence in her teammates. And that says an awful lot about this University of San Diego High School team. They're a confident bunch. They're a skillful bunch. You give Coronado a lot of credit for hanging with them. I don't think anybody thought they'd be here. And here's Ashley Kopp cutting in. She's got the ball. Left-footed shot over the toss bar. Just missing. My. Oh, that would have been a big mistake. You don't want to be giving away goals in overtime, and unfortunately, I think that's what it may come down to. It just may be a mistake here that hands this game to one of these two teams. Bogart, back to Hoban, up for Ragudos, but Ragudos can't quite get there. Now it's Quiser, and she's got Cop in the middle. Mulvey, cleaning up as she should back there from her sweeper position. There's a ball for Walsh. Walsh it has it crossed in. Quiser's going to get there and a goal, and she's got the golden goal to win it. Coronado wins the girls' Division III CIF title. Dana Quiser, their leading goal scorer all year long, does it again. Across into the box that she beat Katie Hoban to and stuffed it into the back of the net. Coach Miles Ramirez getting lots of hugs from his Islanders. And what a, what a game, what an ending. The University of San Diego High School players devastated, and they shouldn't be. They're a great team, appearing in their 14th consecutive final, and they lose it in overtime. But they played well enough to win this game. But the Coronado Islanders, tonight is their night. And fortunately, we don't have the situation we had earlier with fans running onto the field. I'm glad to see that security's kept them all in the stands because this really steals the moment from the kids when the fans come out here. So I'm glad that these young ladies get an opportunity to enjoy this championship. The final score, Coronado 2, University of San Diego High School 1. Coronado Islanders are your girls division three CIF champions for 2004.
Number six, Sarah Walker. Number seven, Natalie Vinci. Number eight, Emily Lee Hall. Number nine, Emily Wynn. Number 10, Paige Haley. Number 11, Megan Fogarty. Number 12, Lauren Bogart. Number 13, Molly O'Toole. Number 14, Jenny Jarvis. Number 15, Jenny Ross. Number 16, Jasmine Amdahl. Number 18, Jasmine Amdahl. Number 19, Jackie Rodrigo. Number 20, Nicole Sarah The assistant on the big, big, big And the assistant on the of the Lady Dawn, Lady Dawn, 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 And the receiving the Sports Fortune Award for the Lady Dawn. Number two, Katie Holden. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2004 Division III Women's Runner-Up, the Lady Dawn of the University of San Diego High School. Thank 